Hi, welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve, and today we're going to be talking about LUTs. What is a LUT? How do you use it? How do you manage them? Where do you get them? And uh, how can they make your footage better? So stay right there. We'll be right back. All right, today we're going to talk about LUTs. And what is a LUT? A LUT is a color lookup table, L-U-T lookup table. And what this does is it takes a, it basically is a map of what a color is in an image and what it should be. And it converts it into a, a better looking image. So that's in general, uh, as simply as I can put it, what a LUT is. So it's just a, a lookup table. It takes the data from what, it should be to what it is going to be and makes it all colorful and pretty. So um, why do we use LUTs? Well, LUTs can get us to a starting point of our editing or our color grading faster. And if you're using color profiles like Cinelike or Log, then a LUT is going to get you to a, a common ground. And then there's other LUTs that are used for creating looks, maybe a, a warm look, a soft look, a sci-fi look, a Western look. So you can use LUTs not only to just do a basic color correction, but also to do a, a stylistic look. So we're going to look at some of that uh, today. Now, do you need LUTs? And the answer is no, you don't need a LUT. Here is some footage that was shot on a Sony a7 III in S-Log2. And I can just as easily go into my, uh, my color grading. I can increase my saturation, maybe move my contrast a little bit. Maybe I want to change the mid-tone blues, uh, you know, maybe give it a little warmer of a look there, adjust my color temperature, uh, make, make it a little warmer, make it a little cooler, you know, for whatever look I'm trying to go for. So you don't necessarily need a LUT. But a LUT can get you, like I said, to a starting point quicker. So I'm going to reset this node grade. And I'm going to install a LUT. Now, where do you get LUTs? That's definitely a good question. And I get a lot of LUTs from Ground Control. I really like the LUTs they have there. And they have a lot of free LUTs that are going to get you from a starting point to a Rec. 709, which is kind of the basic color profile that you might want to have. So here they've got Sony S-Log3, Canon CineStyle, Cinelike D, GoPro. So here's DJI Log, some sample uh, warming LUTs. Here's D-Log M for the Mavic 2 Pro, Blackmagic Film. So if you have one of these cameras, you can start off very easily with uh, gain a LUT. So I've already downloaded the Sony S-Log2 to Rec. 709 LUT, and that's what we're going to install. So I'm going to go over to my system preferences, and then I'm going to go to color management. And I scroll down here to lookup tables, and I'm going to open my LUT folder. Okay, so here's my LUT folder that has all my different LUTs in it that are available to DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to find, uh, my, here's my Sony folder. So here's the one I've downloaded, the Ground Control Renegade 2 S-Log2 to Rec. 709. I'm going to copy it to my Sony folder uh, since I'm going to be using it with my Sony. Makes a lot of sense. All right, now I'm going to close these folders and I'm going to click on update lists. Now I do have quite a few LUTs, so on my machine, this is going to take just a moment to update everything. You can't just copy it in there and let it go. You actually have to tell it that you've updated it. All right, now that it's updated, I am going to go to save. All right, now I'm back to my color page and I'm going to scroll down to my Sony LUTs. Now, if you don't see this, 
click on the LUTs in the upper left hand corner here, see the icon LUTs, and this is my list of LUTs, and then next to it is a LUT browser. So if I just hover over it, it's going to give me what that LUT is going to look like. Now these other LUTs that you see in here, these are for Sony S-Log3. So you can see they're not, they're not right at all. But this one from Ground Control for S-Log2, that's really nice. So I'm just going to double click on it to apply it. It's really just that simple. Now, a couple things to note. I'm going to undo that. Before we do that, before we add a LUT, again, I'm going to reset my node grade here. We want to make sure that our exposure is right. So the first thing that you're going to do before applying a LUT is do your basic corrections. So here, this is not a bad looking scope. Maybe I want to increase my gain a little bit. Maybe I want to pull down my lift a little bit just to make sure I'm kind of getting in the full range there. And then typically I will add a new node. So on a Mac, it's going to be Option S or it's going to be Alt S on uh, Windows. This is the node I'm going to add my LUT to. And boom. But now if you notice, this LUT does expand the exposure range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my first node and I'm going to pull those things down so nothing is clipping. There we go. I'm going to bring up the bottom just a hair. So I'm going to try and make sure I get the most dynamic range out of this as possible. And usually I'm going to have an adjustment node first, then my LUTs, and then my look. So I'm going to go ahead and add another load, another node. So just to look at some other things, I have some other uh, LUTs here. And uh, let's see, motion effects. Oh. So I'll go to this vivid LUTs. And you can see how you can change uh, a look very easily. I don't tend to use a lot of look LUTs. I tend to just kind of get to Rec 709 and then now after I've got my LUT node, now I'm typically going to add another node and this could be my, I'll call it my look node. And maybe I want to have a warmer color temperature, increase my shadows or my highlights, some other minor adjustments to get kind of the look and feel that I'm going for. Now, if I'm not, I'm just trying to make it look as natural as possible. I'm probably just going to stick to the Rec 709 look and call it a day. If I am doing stock footage, this is the end of the process. I'm going to do a basic correction, add a Rec 709 LUT, and done. I'm not going to add any look to it for stock footage. Leave that to the people who are doing the editing. Now, what LUTs should you be looking for? And that depends on the camera and the color profiles that you have. Now, I work with Sony products and I work with DJI products. So with Sony, it's pretty easy. It's a Sony a7 III. I'm either using Cinelike or S-Log. On my DJI products, if I'm using an Osmo Pocket, I'm using Cinelike. If I'm using my Mavic 2 Pro, I'm using S-Log M. So I'm going to look for those Rec. 709 LUTs specific to those types of products. Now, again, we'll go back to a ground control here. And if you're using a DJI product, uh, let's say a DJI Phantom 4 Pro or Mavic 2 Pro, something that just shoots regular D-Log, you want the D-Log LUT. If you're using the Osmo Pocket, that's going to be Cinelike D. So you're going to want the Cinelike D LUT. And the Mavic 2 Pro, that's going to be D Log M. Panasonic, there's a LUT for that. And again, Sony S Log 3, there's a LUT for that. So this is all what LUTs are about. 
Hopefully this has been useful and is going to help you get your color grading going much faster than before. So if you liked the video, hit like, hit subscribe, be sure and check that bell icon to get notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks for watching everybody, really appreciate all the support out there. Keep those comments and questions coming and I will do videos based on what you people are asking for. Thanks for watching, I will catch you next time. Bye bye.